Good morning friends. So in today's topic, we're going to talk about some of the important security setup in our VPC. So we're going to talk about two things now, security groups and NACL. So let us start. What are these two? So security groups and NACL are basically your security layer. So it protects your EC2 instances and your subnets from any external or unwanted communication. Let us say that you have your VPC. Let me select a color which we can identify. Okay, so you have your uh, v VPC and within your VPC you have two subnets. Assume one is a private subnet, another is a public subnet. And within your public subnet, you host your EC2 instances. Now assume this is your VPC setup. Now you need to assign some kind of rules which will specify what ports to open and which IP address to allow access to your EC2 instances. So this is where security groups comes in picture. So even in our previous videos, we have uh, seen a lot of demo where we create an EC2 instance and we attach a security group to those EC2 instance. In fact, a security group is a mandatory setup when you create your EC2 instance, otherwise it will not be accessible. You can't even access your Linux EC2 instance through your putty, right? So you need to open the port 22 to be able to access your Linux EC2 instance via PuTTY. So that's in fact the purpose of a security group. You basically allow certain ports to be opened. You allow certain IP addresses to be um, made access to your uh, instances. So it basically provides a layer of security around your EC2 instances. So if I have to show it in a a di diagrammatic way so it basically surrounds or protects your EC2 instance so no matter how many EC2 instance you have you attach each of these EC2 instance with a security group and this security group basically it makes a call on which port or which IP addresses to be accessible to your EC2 instance right <coughs> so that is the purpose of a security group now the next concept which we're going to discuss is NACL. NACL is similar to uh, security groups. It allows or denies a certain request to enter into your, uh, just like how security groups allow or deny certain request to your EC2 instance, NACL does the same for subnets. So assume this is a subnet. It basically acts as a protective layer to your subnet, right? So NACL by default, it allows all the requests to come or to enter into your subnet. So whenever you create a VPC, it comes with a default NACL, but you can also create a custom NACL if you require. By default, the default NACL will allow all the requests to uh, penetrate into your subnet. It does not restrict anything. But if you look at the case of a security group, by default, it will restrict everything it will deny all the access and you have to explicitly tell your security groups which access or which port to open this is contrary to nacl because in nacl by default everything is allowed no it does not restrict or it does not deny anything so you can assume something like nacl is a subnet level access and a security group is an ec2 instance level access I hope this diagram gives, gives you a clear picture on what is NACL and, and what level the NACL acts and at what level the security group provides you security. Now let us go back to our theory and try to cover these topics. Okay. So let's start with the uh, security groups. Security groups are required to control your inbound and outbound request to your EC2 instance. So it basically says, uh, what are all the incoming requests and what are all the out outgoing requests and how you can handle these things and security groups is at an instance level it is not at the subnet level so you need to associate a specific security groups to your EC2 instance and per security group can have up to 50 different rules you can open or close uh, HTTP or you can open TCP or you can open UDP protocol and at what port to open which IP address to allow access do you want to open the HTTP port 80 to everyone or do you want to open the HTTP port 80 to a specific range of IP addresses all these can be specified in your um, when you're creating your security group and you're 
uh, mentioning your inbound and outbound rules right and by default security group only allows or specified which means that just we have discussed by default security group denies all the request so you have to explicitly specify what request to be allowed so that is why you can only specify the allow rules you cannot specify the deny rules because by default everything is denied in security groups now the next is an access control list so the uh, additional security layer is created in uh, VPC, which is a subnet level. So your each subnet will have a specific NACL. By default, NACL allows all the traffic. It does not deny or it does not restrict contrary to security groups. Security groups, by default, it restricts everything. And NACL, by default, it allows all the traffic. This is the main difference between NACL and security groups. And one NACL can be attached to multiple subnets. You can create one NACL and you can um, assign that to multiple subnets if all the subnets has the same security uh, principle. So here in NACL, you can specify both allow and deny rules. You can say, okay, I want to allow this and I want to deny certain uh, IP address to be accessed. On contrary to uh, security groups, you can only specify what has to be allowed. You cannot specify what has to be denied. Whereas in NACL, you can specify both what has to be allowed and what has to be denied. These are some of the basic differences. NACL is stateless, whereas security group is a stateful. So what we primarily mean by stateless and stateful is in NACL, when we say it's stateless, the inbound and outbound rule for a specific IP address may change. You can say that for the specific IP address, only inbound is allowed, but the outbound is not allowed, right? Whereas in security group, it is stateful. Like if you say, if you allow a specific IP address, by default, even the outbound is allowed for that specific IP address. And NACL is defined per subnet, whereas security group, each instance can have a different set of security groups. So you can have, you can attach more than one security group to a specific instance. Like you can create one security group, which will allow uh, SSH, and you can create one more security group, which will allow HTTP calls, and then based on that, you can attach uh, the corresponding security groups, which uh, your EC2 instance requires. NACL can allow, can allow both allow and deny rules. So as we have seen, there are a set of rules uh, you create in NACL or security group. So in NACL, when you create a group, you can create a group for both allow request and deny request because this is stateless. So you have to explicitly say whether the inbound is allowed for the specific IP and the outbound is also allowed for the specific IP. Whereas in security group can specify only allow rules or not de deny rules. So if you allow inbound, even the outbound is allowed for that. And a subnet can be assigned to only one NACL, right? Whereas in security group, an instance can be associated with five security groups. With each security groups, you can have up to 50 different rules. So as we have said, you can create a security group just to open SSH connection. You can create a security group to open connection to HTTP. So similarly, you can have up to five different security groups attached to your uh, EC2 instance, and you can write up to 50 different rules in each security in each security groups. So these are some of the basic difference between an NACL and a security groups, and these both are basically used as a check post in your VPC. Like when any external request enters into your VPC, it first gets validated by the NACL and then it gets validated by the security group. So it is first stopped in the first check post, which is, which is your subnet. Um, the NACL is a check post here. It first, uh, by default, it allows everything. But if you have created a custom NACL, then based on the rules you specify in NACL, it gets validated in the subnet level and then it gets allowed to flow inside the subnets and then you have another check post out, outside your EC2 instance which is your security group and in the security group you specify certain more rules and based on these rules it decides whether the request will be allowed to access your EC2 or it has to be denied so these are the basic differences between your NACL and security groups and we have uh, we will be seeing this when we uh, do our demo session in VPC. I will show you how to create a custom VPC. So that is where we will see how to create an NACL and how to assign an NACL to your subnets. And 
we have we have already seen many demos where we have created these security groups and we assign it to an EC2 instance. So hope at least a security group you should be pretty much comfortable. But we will see uh, a demo on NACL when we create a custom VPC for you. Uh, so that's it for today's uh, session, guys. So I hope uh, this particular presentation was useful for you. I know in this VPC playlist we have seen a lot of theory. We haven't. Uh, started doing a demo session, but uh, there are still certain components being left which we have which we have to touch upon and After that we will start our demo session. So I hope you enjoy this videos if You have any feedback for me, please comment if you like this video Please don't forget to like and share it among your friends. Thank you so much and goodbye